So I've been thinking a lot about debates recently. What race is Islam? What all race? Muslims. No, I'm not against all Muslims. Yes, I got married are. last year. And I had four Muslims at my different? wedding. Saying that they're getting paid illegally less than men to do the same job. Well, look, that's not fair, well, is let's it? Let's go to the first question. They're both are complicated questions. Katie, we are. You come on here to you be spoken controversial. for quite a so long time, Peter. So I'm just going to speak to you. Had your shot for the minute. We've got to let her talk. But he lost the popular vote by nearly three million votes. Do you not? Have you ever read Kenneth Harrell? I'm starting to think they're kind of dumb, not least because they seem to be the main vehicle through which the most annoying people on the planet get on TV. I've that been a critic of Obama, I'm a critic of the it Democratic Party, because I'm literally a communist. Fair point. For those of you with very healthy emotional lives who don't spend most of their days scrolling on Twitter, sorry, one minute. Recently, two darlings of the culture wars conservative right went on flagship BBC programs and got dealt a bit of a mauling. Really, would you, would you, would you call the pro choice person. position? So, so, so why don't so you just answer my question? Sir, do you still What's want, wrong with the BBC? Do you still want to what roll, is wrong with the BBC? Do you still want to roll back gun controls and reintroduce what? If it's so obvious that Andrew Marr utterly destroyed Nigel Farage, why is it that the Brexit Party's tweet of the exchange got shared over 2,000 times and has been viewed by over a million people? Something doesn't quite add up here. By any metric, you would say that Andrew Marr was the one who came off best in that exchange with Nigel Farage. He seemed clear, he seemed calm, he didn't raise his voice. However, I don't think that Nigel Farage was there to win a debate against Andrew Marr. He wasn't interested in making the best points. All he wanted to do was declare war on the BBC. I've been going around the country, speaking at pack rallies every night. And do you know who's not there? The BBC. And from this line of questioning now, I can see why. You see a similar dynamic play out in Andrew Neil's now notorious grilling of noted Kermit the Frog impersonator, Ben Shapiro. You know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer, so I think we're done here. It's often said when it comes to fighting the far right that sunlight is the best disinfectant. As well as having dubious medical credibility, this metaphor's effectiveness as a prescription for fighting the far right is basically homeopathic. I can't think of a single interviewer who's better than Andrew Neil when it comes to televised vivisections of guests. But while he was able to deftly expose Ben Shapiro as a fraud and a know-nothing... Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh, Is this so hard for you? Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> the central pillars of his ideology were left intact. This is a problem of the form itself. The setup of an adversarial interview segment means you're well placed to discredit an individual, less so when it comes to delegitimizing an ideology, a social movement, or its intellectual breeding grounds. Mm. What this actually showed is that Ben Shapiro was more than happy to disavow or modify things that he said in even the very recent past. Again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. That's the wording of, of President Trump's 2012 address was bad and wrong. That's all. There are plenty of things that are bad and wrong, but it doesn't make them fascist. And I think it's because none of this actually touched the core of his racist ideology. Case in point, Andrew Neil was able to get Ben Shapiro to row back on an individual racist comment he had made about Arabs. Sure. Israelis like to build. Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that was list that includes, dumb? Well, yes, that's a dumb tweet. But was unable to press him on the foundation of Shapiro's work, Judeo-Christian culture. And to be fair to Neil, Shapiro stormed off in a huff before he was able to raise the question. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? I, I just really? asked you a question. And I asked you a question, you failed to answer a single one of mine. Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time. But why is this important? Because this framing sets Muslims apart from our Abrahamic cousins, Jews and Christians, and what's more, absolves Christianity and whiteness more generally of responsibility for the most deadly instances of anti-Semitism in human history. So even though he made a complete tit of himself, Ben Shapiro was actually quite successful because he was able to take a fringe idea, which has a violent following, and place it slap bang in the middle of mainstream political discourse. He didn't have to win a head-to-head -head with Andrew Neil. His victory was getting invited onto the BBC in the first place. I think that no platform is a tool rather than a moral imperative. There's not much of a point in saying no platform when someone's already got millions of followers. What it's actually about is responsible coverage. 
And that means thinking about interview formats which challenge the strategic political objectives of your guests rather than simply fulfilling them. In my view, that means long form content, deep dives, documentaries. Two minute clip with over a million views is never a car crash. It's virality of the kind that money can't buy. Because here's the thing, even when it looks like they've lost, culture warriors have actually played the game better than those who set the rules of engagement in the first place. Subscribe to Navarra Media on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you liked this content, why not give us some money? If you didn't like this content, also give us some money and maybe it'll improve in the future.